Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Elsa and I'm a software engineer working at Amazon. Today is going to be a more casual story time video where I explain how I got this job. I'll start by giving you some context on my background, then I'll explain how I got the chance to interview at Amazon, and then I'll explain a bit of how the interviewing process went. So I studied computer science in the University of the Basque Country in San Sebastian. During that time at university, I did a couple of internships. One of them was at the university itself, and then another one was for IBM. During my time at university, I was the president of a junior tech company for a couple of years. If you're not familiar with the concept of junior companies, it's a company that is located in the university itself and just works as any other company. You basically pay your taxes, do everything, but it's managed entirely by students. Also, while I was a uni after classes I would spend some of my free time coding some personal project and then I would upload it to github if you're not familiar with github it's basically an online repository where you can upload all your coding projects and showcase them there I think in general it's pretty good to have something to show apart from the stuff that you did in class because that shows that you are actually interested in coding and making stuff right so I think in general companies really appreciate when people are enthusiastic about about what they're doing and so they're trying to look for those kind of people so if you have the chance I would advise you to take on some cool projects in your free time and just develop them I think it's something really fun to do and it always adds a lot of value to your CV so I would say that in general is a pretty good time investment for example if you want to apply for a role as an Android developer you want to have some projects that are open source related to that right you want to show people that you're able to write clean code in Android and that you actually have some experience on it. So unless you've been working in the industry as an Android developer before, it's going to be tricky to find a job if you don't have any experience on it and if you haven't done any projects related to it. So it's always good to work on your portfolio. Once I graduated from college, I did a master's degree in big data analytics. I've always been super interested in machine learning, big data, neural networks, all this kind of stuff is like just so cool to me. But anyways, so I started my master's in September 2018 and in February 2019 I had a friend that was studying at another university in Madrid and he told me Amazon was going to give a talk at his university and that they were trying to recruit some talent there. He told me, hey, I'm going, do you want to come? And so I was like, yeah, sure, let's let's do it. I mean, to be honest, uh, to this day, I don't really know if I was supposed to be there. I don't even know if this was open to all students. I don't I don't think so but I went there anyways I just thought it would be like really interesting and I looked like a student I was a student just wasn't my university so my friend just got me in and I went there and they talked about how the interviewing process works at Amazon blah 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 so when the talk was over they told us that we could submit our CVs for two types of positions there were internships and there were graduate positions for internships I wasn't eligible because I was going to graduate that same year so for me it was the graduate one right I applied for that one I submitted my CV and so they reached out to me by email to tell me that I was gonna do an actual interview and it was gonna be in person at the same university so I went back to the university I did the interview I think it lasted like 30 minutes it was super short or at least I remember it was super short. I feel like it was like the first 10 minutes, it was behavioral questions and the rest was a coding question. And so after the interview, I remember feeling quite confident that I did well. I remember the coding question was quite easy to me and I felt like I did pretty well on both behavioral and coding. So I was quite confident that they were going to call me back. So they reached out by email again to tell me that I passed the first interview and that I would go on to do the actual interview so I think this was like a first filter it would be the equivalent of a phone screen interview and then this was like the real deal um, this was the actual three hour long interview the real interview lasted three hours it was three interviews one hour each and for each interview we will have about 20 minutes for behavioral questions and 25 minutes for coding questions and then we will have like some extra minutes for asking any questions or going 
going to the bathroom if we needed to, all that stuff. I remember it was like quite well organized and structured. And so for me, it was three interviews, but I know that's not always the case. Depending on the role you're applying for and your experience, you'll get a longer or shorter interview. So for me, it was a graduate software engineering position. So that's why I had three, but I feel like it would have been more if I wasn't a graduate student. So just saying that in case you want to interview, you can expect perhaps four or more. I don't know. <laughs> the interview was in March, I think. So I had to do it virtually because of COVID. We weren't allowed to do on-site interviews anymore. And so... I was super nervous for this one, literally freaking out, and I prepared so much. The single best thing that I did in order to prepare for this interview was reading the book called Cracking the Code in Interview. If you want to prepare for your interview, I highly recommend you read this book. This was literally the single best decision I made to prepare for this interview, because if it wasn't for this book, I would have no clue of what to prepare, what to study. And I can assure you that if you read the book and you actually do the exercises, you'll be way more prepared than most people applying for that same position. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description down below. So if you actually buy it, I'll get a small commission for it. So reading the book and doing the exercises was most of the stuff I did in order to prepare for the interviews. But the last days before the interview, what I did to prepare was checking out questions in Glassdoor. If you don't know Glassdoor, is a social network where employees can rate their employers but there's also plenty of examples of interviewing questions so what I did was search for Amazon interviewing questions and the last days before the interview I only did that I only did questions that I found on Glassdoor I looked for both behavioral and coding questions and I practiced all of them during the previous days before the interview I asked a friend of mine to act as the interviewer and she would ask me the questions from Glassdoor and I would try to answer them as well as I could on the spot Spot, and that really helped me gain some confidence because this was my first and only interview ever in my life. So I had zero experience with it. I wasn't confident at all. I was actually super nervous. So I really wanted to practice those behavioral questions with someone before going for the interview. And so once I was confident enough, the day of the interview arrived and I did my best to try to stay calm that morning. I did like my usual breakfast, relaxed. Um, and I tried to be as calm as I could because I feel like one of the best indicators of of an interview going well or wrong is how nervous you are. I knew that if I was nervous, I wouldn't think clearly. I wouldn't be able to solve the problems as well as I can do it normally. And so the only thing that I was worrying about was to actually stay calm. If you're too nervous, you won't be able to think clearly. You will get stuck in your words, all that. <laughs> and also like English wasn't my first language and it's not my first language. So that was like an additional struggle. So yeah, remember that the interview is going to be in English. So if that's not your first language, try to practice out loud while you do the exercises. Something that I think I did quite well during my interview was being very vocal about everything I was doing. Most times the coding interview questions aren't about solving this problem as fast as you can, but it's more about seeing how you think, how you can develop the ideas and reach a solution. So one of the most important things is to be verbally active. Ask them questions. Don't stay silent because otherwise they, they won't know if what's going on is that you don't know how to do it or if you're actually thinking about the solution. So just say it out loud and they will know. Another thing that I did was ask them questions. If I wasn't sure about the thing or if I didn't understand the problem correctly, I would ask for clarifications. And that's not a negative thing to do. I feel like mo many people perhaps have the perception that you shouldn't be asking questions in the interview. You're supposed to ask them. In, in the real world, when you work with them, you'll have incognites and you will need to define requirements for projects and things like that. So they want you to actually ask questions, ask for clarification. They Want to see that you're actually thinking about all the possibilities. I have to say the coding questions were much harder than in the first interview. I tried to do my best. I really don't know how it went. I mean, it went well because they hired me, but they don't give you feedback on your interviews. Never. Like they never tell you, oh, you did well on this thing. You did worse on this one. No, you have zero information 
on the reason of why they hired you. But yeah, in general, the interview was, was good, but they were quite hard, I have to say. So try to prepare well for them. Most people are not willing to put in the hours to prepare very well for an interview. So if you take the time and put in the effort, you'd be much better off than most people. And so I think that's it. I'm sorry if it was all over the place. Sometimes I tried to throw some tips here and there, but hopefully they were useful and you can apply them to your own interviewing process. I really wish you the best if you're interviewing. You got this. I'll be cheering for you. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment section down below. I always read all of your comments, so please ask them and I will answer them as soon as I can. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.